Hey, 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 it's Kieran on the bad microphone for a pre-episode announcement. Uh, what you're about to listen to is a conversation that we had uh, with Nadim from 99621s, uh, which is a German podcast, but this episode is in English, so don't worry. Um, 99621s is a great podcast. You should listen to them if you understand German. They're, you can find them on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We'll have links to all that in the description. Uh, this was a fun conversation about... Uh, uh, podcasting in English in Germany, the German podcasting scene in its infancy. Uh, I got reminded by Nadine that we were actually one of the oldest, um, which is surprising. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good conversation. Um, reason we're releasing this on the main feed is, uh, instead of one of our usual episodes, is that half the podcast has been stricken down with COVID, so recording episodes is a bit difficult. Uh, we did manage to release a bonus episode and a main episode last week, and we'll probably have a bonus episode uh, this week as well. So you can still listen to episodes on patreon.com forward slash corner Um And hopefully we'll have some main episodes out soon. We'll be back to normal because, uh, as far as I understand, Nick and Rob are just feeling better. Um, so once they're testing negative, we're good to go. Um, anything else? Yeah. Um, enjoy this podcast. Uh, if you're joining this podcast feed from our episode with Nadim, uh, uh, with uh, uh, then you should check out our back catalog because you've probably already heard all of this. Um, operationglad.io forward slash start. And there you can find episodes that we've done uh, sorted by character and country. You can see what we've talked about in Germany in the past. You can take a look at the other countries we've covered if they take your fancy. Uh, uh, and you can also get some introductory episodes into some of our characters, like, you know, Bera and Volt and, yeah. So, with that, uh, enjoy this episode. Peace. Herzlich willkommen bei 99 zu 1. Uh, switching directly into English, welcome to 99 zu 1. This one I'll say in German. And today we have a special crossover with... Uh, the coolest non-German German podcast or non-German speaking German podcast. Uh, Kornerspeti is visiting us and I'll bring the guys and girls in right away. One, two, three, and four. Uh, Nick, Kieran, and Julia. Julia is a little bit late, I've heard. And Karl Lauterbach himself, a.k.a. Oh. Rob from Kornerspeti. <laughs> Welcome to non Science. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for also queuing right when I was picking my nose. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, I warned you. I warned you. Like I was like three seconds ahead. Uh, I mean, I have, I have lost all abilities of like true social contact with people. So it's fine. Your hair looks good. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, for, <laughs> always for, does. For, what? It always does. Is it always does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's a new right. thing for you, but you know, it's us. that's why we didn't comment on it. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, you are three of the four hosts of, yeah, and they do have faces, exactly, Boom, uh, three of the four hosts of the Corner Spiti podcast, some uh, podcast that was, I think, started in 2019, so you're not a pandemic podcast, just like all the other podcasts, you yeah, actually no, no. around it's longer, right? Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, early pandemic episodes are terrible, don't listen to them. <laughs> all right, okay. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the first paragraph of uh, from your website. I really like that text. Um, gives a little bit of an impression where this is going. Corner Speti is a podcast about the dumb Asian peninsula posing as a continent. I I like to call them the dangly bits off of Asia, um, Europe. Are you an American sick of hearing that if you come to uh, if you become Sweden, all of your problems will be solved? Are you a European sick of listening to people only complain about the USA? Well, we got the podcast for you, whether it's reminding Germans that they did colonialism, deep diving into Norway's monstrous sexual assault party, or talking about Greece's and Italy's shared history of fascism. We are here to talk shit about it. Um, I, I guess this text is a little bit older. Do you, do you still think that holds up? Is that what you're doing, guys? No. <laughs> You gotta hash it out. To, yeah, I'm trying to kickstart my rap career. This podcast means yeah. nothing to me. Okay. Uh, no, I mean, I I think that uh, the pandemic just kind of proved us right. You know, I mean, it's oh, it's yeah. the same. It's the same bullshit. Just it's more focused now. It's easier to do the show. 
I think now. Yeah. We, we, we've gotten into stuff. I, I still stand by some of those episodes that are linked. That text is probably quite old. And it was a lot of just like, you've made a website. Here's the about page. And it's just like, <laughs> what do I put here? What do I put here? I don't understand. What do I put here? Um, but no, I still stand by that. I, I encounter a huge amount of Germans that just don't know about like Deutsch Sudost Africa or whatever, like uh, uh, Sudwest Africa. They just, just don't know what happened. Um and yeah, people in the chat are talking about Per Sandberg from Progress Party, which is the party <laughs> we were talking about in Norway. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, Carl, what do you think? Is that still like what, how you identify yourself as a podcaster? Does that match what you're doing? Sure. That? Sure. That's definitely, um, Kieran has a very uh, beautiful writing voice. You can hear him from a mile away. I okay. mean that as a, as a, as a compliment. Um, and he says things... Uh, certainly better than I can. I kind of just get together with my friends, talk about the news, uh, learn about different political parties in, in other, other parts of Europe that I, uh, I probably never would have otherwise always do eventually. It's like two, three weeks after we initially start talking about it, but then we come up with a, with a, a grand unified theory of, of Europe at the end of the day. Yeah, great. Uh, how many episodes now? Uh, like you're bordering, like you're coming close to 200 or something, right? Let me see. Probably. 200 main yeah. episodes, but then with the ones that we do in Patreon. We're, ah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're probably... 199, actually. Yeah, there you go. Actually? <laughs> <laughs> the 200th episode. Ah, I was, yeah. was going to get you all gifts. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, you might be trusting <laughs> that we're uh, uh, either of the feeds are keeping track correctly oh, of okay. the number, yeah. uh, uh, which is <laughs> where we're not necessarily good at that. Uh, it's definitely 165 main feed episodes now covering basically everything. Uh, um, on this continent, we have a very generous definition of what this continent is, more generous than most. Um, and then the bonus episodes, yeah, we've been doing the bonus episodes now consistently for a year, year and a half, something like that. Yeah, so that's that's been, it's been good. Uh, there's always more nonsense to talk about, and I always enter into a fugue state where I forget why I recorded or what I said. So don't quiz me on any of it. <laughs> do you actually do you guys actually listen to your own stuff? Ooh, I'm gonna let the others. I'm like Not I'm like here on all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm like 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 Lil Wayne, where uh, the mm. only stuff that he listens to is his own music. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I and you learn you learn so much, right? It's like exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, to, to be to be like to be fair, I do like I. I think I probably edit, I don't know, 75% of the episodes. It's been a lot less in the last year. Yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, I mean, I go back and I have to listen to them. But uh, because <laughs> I don't listen to any other podcasts, so it's uh, it's not really, like, out of... Um, I'll, I'll, like, go and listen to, like, if Kieran and Rob put an episode up by themselves. But, yeah, I mean... My case isn't necessarily like, uh, you know, because I want to. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I'm an involuntary fan of my own show, which is actually kind of nice because then I listen back. I'm like, oh, this wasn't completely stupid. I can like <laughs> listen back and still giggle to it. So that's a good sign. Oh, yeah. We, we, uh, in the moment, we think we're being, um, very stupid and then we listen back later and we're like ah yeah we're only <laughs> we were, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it works both ways it's also the other way around where you feel think like whoa that was great <laughs> <laughs> secret to podcasting is to have really terrible self-esteem uh and constantly be seeking the approval of the audience <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah right i would like to speak more about the podcast but actually um I, yeah, I wanted to do this a bit later and speak about you guys first, but I think let's start talking more about the podcast because I, of course, also would like to uh, for Julia to introduce herself. So talk a little bit about your, about your individual motivations. So talking about Cornish Betty, you kind of already hinted at it and I um, read this first paragraph, but tell us a little bit about your background. Like what, what, what is your goal with this um, podcast? Why are you doing this? How, how did you guys maybe meet? Um, how did this idea come up and what are you trying to achieve with Cornish BT? Rob, do you have a good answer to this? 
no, you you start, and then I'm gonna uh, <laughs> and jump in. Or, you know, I'm gonna think while you talk, and then it'll sound better. Yeah, um, I guess I guess I'll, I'll I'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, what we're trying to do in in a serious answer, which is that if anyone hasn't been able to tell or if hasn't been mentioned yet, I am Irish uh, based on my accent, and my name, and if you try to engage with any kind of left wing media in the English speaking language, it is just going to be overwhelmingly America focused. Right. Um, and I don't live there. It was probably the main goal. <laughs> uh, um, so trying to get that to, to work, uh, um, trying to make like a, a product that or like a, a thing to listen to that I would want to listen to was probably the goal. Um, it's also a great excuse to like learn and read and talk to a bunch of people that are much smarter than us. Uh, get them on the show and for them to say their piece. Um, and I'm going to let Rob take over now because Yulia is here. Yay, <laughs> Rob. Uh, it's it's funny you um, you pointed out that we are a pre-pandemic um, podcast because I, I think in the U.S. I'm, I'm from the U.S. For those who don't know, um, there are also a lot of new podcasts in uh, during Corona, but especially in Germany and something about the the like left wing podcasting scene was not uh very big no. <laughs> before before 2020 but it was huge in the US um yeah, yeah. Uh, since 2016 and it was mostly like i i've i've lived here since uh early 2016 so like that was all a very uh simultaneously foreign and personal experience right like people like I could listen to people going through similar uh, thought processes or developments that I was just like hanging out with my friends in Hamburg. And uh, I, there was, I was living a very different life too. And I think I definitely wanted to talk about it or express it in some way. And I know a lot of other people did too, because it was shockingly international, like a bunch of uh, what a bunch of uh, podcasters in Brooklyn had to say. And right. I think that, that's uh cool but it's also like a never-ending process like we've talked about it before on the show but the uh, one of the best things we like is when people uh start their own podcast in like a non-english language about their country yes. because like it's the only like it's the only way this is going to stay fresh or interesting or relevant at all um so we were just i don't know maybe doing our little part you could say that shout out to Squatamala, which is the czech version of our podcast they are great <laughs> Oh really? There if, is a Czech if, version. If, I didn't the, know if the translation is to be believed, you know, could be a big prank being played on us. <laughs> oh, that would be such a good prank. Yeah, I don't speak Czech, so if they were just like, "Yeah, we're the Czech version of your podcast," we just have to take their word for it, I guess. Yeah, exactly. None of us, none of us, <laughs> anything close to it. So, uh, welcome, Julia. By the way. Hi. Sorry. For Hi. Being late. <laughs> no problem. Nice to have you here. All good. Uh, I just want to get back to Rob for a second because you were talking about you know the, the American podcasting la uh, landscape left tube and and the podcasts themselves and and you were talking about those uh, internationalist podcasters uh, out of Brooklyn. Um, so what what would you be listening to from 2006 to I don't know 2019 when you started Cornish Beatty? What was where, where are the guys that you were listening to? Um, I mean the the. Gold standard for me was always Chapa Trap House. I'm sure mm -hmm. it was for, for a lot of people. I probably listen to every episode multiple times. Uh, um, like, especially at work, just like on my computer. Uh, that was very cathartic for me. Uh, and I know it was for a lot of other people. Um, I wasn't a huge podcast person. I, I mean, I, I did and still listen to like some history podcasts, some more informational podcasts. But um, I've described the podcasting this podcasting style for those who don't know as a bit of a self-help group for <laughs> yeah overwhelmingly male <laughs> uh listeners and and leftists and i think it's you could even say it is um i've talked to people who, who like the show about how where it's like a different uh way of like a different form of masculinity you know a non-toxic masculinity hopefully uh, when I hear things like that, I'm I'm like, cool. I hope so. I, mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know yeah, if that's what I was going for, a but uh... form of masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I think that's uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I, I was asking because um one of the motivating moments for us to actually start the podcast. I mean, we we haven't actually thought of it before summer 2020, 
uh, when Michael Brooks died. Mm -hmm. So we, we, I, myself and my wife, huge fans of Michael, of the Michael Brooks show. And we love the guy and we were also a little bit in contact with him. And when, when he passed away, that was just such a shock um, and such a loss also because you were listening to this guy every week and you get this information and these discussions and all of these guys that he has on, et cetera. And suddenly that's not there anymore. And it's also when I realized that's the first time that I started thinking about that we actually don't have anything like that in, the, in Germany. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. that's where that's a little bit also, I mean, I, I would say we departed from... From, from the style now a little bit, of course, a little bit, right? Um, but um, the, the inspira that's definitely where the inspiration came from. Um, yeah, from I, I was never never much of a Michael Brooks head, but your, like, that description doesn't surprise me at all because I know the effect that he had on people and also that his, um, you know, sudden passing had on people. And I think that that's, I think he was one of the uh, few podcasters who got it, you can say, because <laughs> you, you, you have a, um social and financial incentive not to get it but that's you know being aware of what this is and what this isn't and um yeah i i i can i can understand that in from from parallel experiences right right okay let, let's uh let's come back to my initial question that i actually wanted to ask each and every one of you um and i don't know maybe we start with julia now because she just arrived oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, that's a, that's a punishment in germany when you when you come in when you come late to class oh, you gotta answer the next question right so yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <remember> that. <laughs> you actually you actually have to do that well not in my school but yeah there, there were tricks like that sometimes yeah definitely mm. <laughs> wow yeah um so julia can you tell us a little bit about yourself um, like well, maybe what's your also something about yourself and also what your role is in this podcast, what you like to do in the podcast. And then one question that my uh, co-host Daniel always likes to ask, and I think, uh, I think that would be interesting to know, tell us the three names that influenced you the most, maybe politically, but also maybe just personally, and it doesn't have to be like the three names, um, forever. They can also change tomorrow, like whatever you think of right now. You sure you want to start with me? <laughs> uh, you, uh, I mean, if you want, I can ask Nick first. Yes, ask Nick first. Yeah, we'll hear Nick's <laughs> Nick, the same go. question to Nick. This is like the worst okay. thing you would ever be asked in like a seminar or something at university. Yeah. So, hi, like, why are you here? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I had yeah, to. Society <laughs> pressured me to go to college. That's why I'm here. Exactly. <laughs> what, were the, what were the questions again? I just, all right, I, I, all right. Yeah. Who are, Nick, 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 who are you? All right, who, who are you? And who are the three names that influenced you the most, politically or personally or whatever? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's the, that was the part I was focusing on a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm Nick. Uh, I'm uh, 29 years old. I've lived in Berlin for I don't know, like eight nine years now. Uh, and I, yeah, nothing really special. I studied like I studied history and political science and got really bored of it and kind of came together with doing this podcast in a similar way of like what Rob was kind of talking about of. Uh, for me, I just like kind of got annoyed with university and like didn't really know what to do in terms of like, yeah, having, I guess, this is just like a group therapy session that turned into a podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, really like nothing. In, yeah, I'm from Arizona. That's about it. Okay. Um, but yeah, three people. All right. Uh, I got to go with, uh, God damn, this is hard. I know. <laughs> um, I got to go with, in terms of just coolness and swagger and everything, uh, Chief Keef. Mm -hmm. um, Money boy. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's right, not a good not inspiration. <laughs> He's a great inspiration. <laughs> Fidel Castro, again, same reason. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same reason. <laughs> <laughs> Fidel Castro, the chief key of the 60s. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, he can actually do something. I'm reading, I'm reading a book about him right now, and he's just like pimp. Yeah, he know. got he got, he got got swag, definitely. Yeah. definitely. He, gets, yeah. he got all the kisses. Oh, he mm -hmm. did get all the yeah. kisses. Yeah, that's a, yeah. And, uh, like, last one. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Olaf Scholz, again. Drip. Sure. You know. <laughs> I can't answer that. Okay, I'm like, uh, you explain the Olaf Scholz? <laughs> Click, he's gone. 
no, no, no. You're yeah. back. You're back. I, I yeah. forget that. Yeah. Swagger sign as chef sake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. From, from exactly <laughs> chef sake. <laughs> um. All right. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Karl Lauterbach. Who are you, and why do we hate you so much? No. Uh, oh fuck. <laughs> Rob, who um, are you, and uh, what are your three names? Um. I really, I don't know. I'm really against having uh, inspirations or names. Um, okay, that's also an answer. Um, <laughs> that's fine. I'm gonna go with. Um, uh, Lasse. Oh. Um, oh. Hildegard. Oh. <laughs> and. Um, we're a very serious podcast. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. Give serious answers, all right. Yeah. Um, last name. I'll just stick with those two because okay, in my name. head they represent okay. like kind of cause. Like, um, I don't know any people named that. It's just they represent <laughs> in my head a certain cosmic like average of a certain like a certain kind of um like uh like a, a certain kind of character i meet in germany and i'm Lass, not lying Lass, when Lass, I say that. okay yeah yeah exactly and i think that both of them represent a certain like it is through my interactions with people like this that i unironically um come to understand myself come to understand the world come to understand that a different world is possible and that we're all we're all going through it together <laughs> And it's it's really, it's really um, the journey can be beautiful. Well, we asked we asked this question quite a few times now, and that was quite excellent. Like one of the best answers I've ever heard. Yet. Anyway, uh, what, what about you, Rob? Third name. I think of a third name by the end. Okay, and what about yourself, Rob? So who are you? Oh, um, I don't know what to say. I'm Rob. I'm also 29. <laughs> I do. I'm. I'm the when when you when you when you twist them up. Yeah. When, when you add a little Hildegard to some exactly. Lassa. Hegel like wrote about that whole you know <laughs> yeah. fucking uh 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 what is it Di uh, dialectics di whatever that shit's called. This is the mm. synthesis that he was talking. About. <laughs> um, yeah, I've lived in Germany since uh, early 2016. Um. So I guess this is my life now. Um, I really like living here, actually. I know some people like to joke about it, but it's great. I, I don't see any reason to leave. Um, and uh, I am actually a student again, even though I'm not a particularly good student. Um, but I, I definitely don't uh, have any uh, ideas or like illusions about what university is and isn't. So like, even though I sympathize with Nick in a certain way, that feels like a long, long time ago. I think it's mostly like um, you learn a lot here. You know, the world's especially coming from the United States. Like, the world is uh, it can be a very small place and like a very uninteresting place. It's very flattened into like we're all on the same page about like what uh, I don't know history, politics, what the what the what the teams are, and uh, I think it's very rewarding to. Um, just realize that it's not like that. <laughs> that there's a whole other world out there. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, but no, it does. Thanks. Um, and also, I mean, normally you would be in the studio now. Just as a note, you're all in Berlin, right? So maybe next yeah. time we can do that in yeah, the studio. Yeah. Uh, sure. Separated by the pandemic, I guess. Um, <laughs> so sad. So sad. Yeah. It so is. Sad. <laughs> I've been loving um, it. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're a bunch of crybabies. The last two years have been great. Um, <laughs> definitely not harrowing existential crises for all uh, of us. Not at all. No. <laughs> not at all. Um, I, can, I can go next. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Kieran. Um, I'm from Ireland. I left Ireland 2015, was in Scotland for a bit, and I came to Berlin in 2018. Uh, actually, my first time in Germany when I just like moved here. Um, that, you haven't been. I hadn't been before. Oh, you no. were just like a oh, layover. Great. That's I, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I did a layover in Cologne uh, uh, once. Uh, that was layover. about it. 
Um, like, I didn't leave the airport. Like, I'm, fucking, I'm fucking staying here. This is yeah, yeah. I saw the like Lego section, the gift shop. I'm like, this country has it figured out. <laughs> Kieran was blindfolded and threw a dart at the map, and then just, <laughs> it actually landed in Poland. But he's like, eh, no, I'm gonna go there. Nah, I would not <laughs> um, hit Berlin. God, like, yeah. Um, God, what, what can I say? The reason for moving here is I would strongly recommend any Germans in the chat to compare the cost of living between Germany and Ireland. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, it is 89% more expensive than Berlin. Uh, woo, Dublin. Yeah, woo, <laughs> Dublin. Uh, ever want to pass multiple buildings and ask yourself what's going on in there and say, don't doesn't matter, can't afford it. Uh, <laughs> it's basically the, the answer. Um, like I, I did a lot of research and it basically seemed like Berlin was just one of the few cities in the world where, you know, you could actually live and not spend every night watching Netflix. Like uh, yeah, Paris. the nice the nice two thousand fifteen. That was a nice time, yeah. yeah that's the reason <laughs> I know people <laughs> complain, but trust me, as someone from Dublin, you ain't seen shit yet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you don't have night buses anymore, do we you? We don't have night we don't have public transport at night. Um <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's called Dublin. <laughs> 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 yep, yep, that's, that's correct. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, it's Ireland was nice to a certain extent. I, I, I think now that we're the news cycle is making us think a lot about NATO. I, I do miss living in a country where we don't have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> like the general consensus in Ireland is war is stupid. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. um so that's pretty good the but yeah i i really do love it here i am here for life probably like i'm I'm just not going back uh i'm gonna write it out and hmm, three three people um i was radicalized as an 11 year old by rage against the machine so <laughs> probably them in there somewhere um oh god James Connolly, if anyone doesn't know James Connolly, he's just like a great Marxist thinker from Ireland. Uh, um, he wrote a lot of great stuff basically about uh, being a colony under capitalism. Um, that's just a great guy to like read. There's a there's a Twitter bot that just posts his quotes. You can just do that. <laughs> and third person, anyone who became a goth as an adult... That seems like <laughs> like res respect, <laughs> nothing but respect. Like I feel like you, like you're like a goth as a teenager, and you either continue or you stop. Who becoming a goth after yeah. being a teenager? That's just that's that's an uphill struggle. And if you're doing that, more power to Is you. Is there like a spike in people becoming goth during the pandemic? Ooh, I want yeah. to get those statistics. Hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. You, have to lose. you have nothing to lose but your chains. And... <laughs> by adding chains to know. your outfits yeah. <laughs> you, have you have nothing, nothing to, to lose, lose your wallet chain <laughs> <laughs> all right julia now you had like you had like i don't know 35 minutes time because the guys took so long I just so. That. No, it always makes me so nervous it's so <laughs> weird it's like the weirdest fucking question i mean it's the most normal question you always expect that but still like, it puts you in the corner julia <laughs> who are you uh, who are you yeah. yeah, I'm Julia. <laughs> I'm actually German. I'm from... Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. What? You didn't know that? <laughs> I did not know that. No, no. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I thought that's the whole joke. <laughs> yeah, we have our token German in our yeah, podcast. I'm the token German. We I'm from Bielefeld. Anything okay. now. Fucking Bielefeld. So, uh, yeah. Um, I studied literature, I studied Eastern European studies, and I think that's what I'm doing on the podcast, mm -hmm. being <laughs> being Eastern European. No, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know those topics. Uh, yeah, know. yeah. what's happening in Serbia? I don't even look it up. I just ask you, yeah. Only, only, ba <laughs> only bad stuff. <laughs> no, but yeah, I think that is what I mostly do. Um, what am I doing now? I am a journalist, so mm -hmm. yeah. Um inspirational yeah, people who, who, who in my people? life yeah. um nick rob and kira <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um oh, that's fucking difficult <laughs> shit <laughs> anything that comes to mind doesn't have to be forever can change tomorrow morning <laughs> i i don't know like 
I mean, even though it's like difficult, I would say my mom, maybe, yeah, sure. because yeah, she has been like a solid lefty uh, throughout my life, um, which, yeah, mm. it's kind of like got me into <laughs> yeah, also fair. the right politics. Um, also, shout out to IOTZ Bielefeld, <laughs> the only one that isn't anti-Deutsch oh, in right. that region. So okay. I was about to um, ask. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it's lame, but it's Rosa Luxemburg who like inspired me a lot. Okay. From like, I guess it's lame, yeah. but we're not gonna get, we're not gonna <laughs> criticize you for picking a basic answer. <laughs> like, that was just good. Lame. He's a name giver for my cat. So. I picked well, James <laughs> Conley. This is Irish Rosa Luxemburg. Yeah, exactly. So I guess, yeah, that's it. Okay, okay, <laughs> cool. Um, how did you guys meet? Like, how did you get together and think about this podcast? Like, did you actually, like, did you hire for the podcast or something? Or did you just, you know, you knew each other before and you started? Nick's, like Nick's shaking his head, but I did hire everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rob wrote something in a newspaper saying, yeah. like, Rob, 20, wait, how old were you? It has to be a Rob. It has to be a Rob. Podcast for sale, never used. 20 something, looking for two lads and one token woman. (laughs) Token (laughs) German. German. I did not write woman. (laughs) 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 Token German, not woman. Oh, yeah. Okay, fair. I I did meet um, uh, everyone first. I think, um, and I, I tell this, I've told the story multiple times on the podcast, but it's very funny. Mutual friends' birthday party. Oh, <laughs> there he goes. And oh. he was the only other uh, uh, American there. And he was doing like, you know, like epic internet style bits yeah. for, for everyone in the crowd. And like, it's entirely true. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was just, I was so entertained, just yeah. like kicking back, being like, I'm just going to watch this <laughs> and, and, and enjoy what's going on. Um, I forget. I, I eventually broke the, um, um, broke the ice, but um, yeah, I think I, I just, I, I, I knew Nick through that. I met uh, Yulia through Nick since they, they, they'd known each other for a while. <laughs> um, and Kieran, I saw made a post on Reddit about forming a podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I messaged him and I realized we had been at the same Jackman reading group. And the, and the uh, and I realized because I said, "Oh, were you the one with the fingerless gloves?" Yeah, that's was. me. <laughs> Damn, that's so punk. Fingerless gloves, <laughs> wallet chain, just being an absolute fucking poser. <laughs> Dressed like I could skateboard, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. When did you and, meet? Like in 2015? It's two, no, we met oh, no, in like 2006. In I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we met in 2006. It's 2006 forever. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah. It was one of those things where I was like, yeah, wouldn't it be funny if we should find people to do a podcast? But then we were kind of like, oh, I guess we, it's just us, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, we, start, we started the podcast as a joke, and then um, now it's still here. <laughs> right. Who is, your, I mean, who is your audience now? I mean, maybe you had a target audience back then, but right now when you, you know, get comments or feedback or emails, like, who are these folks that are listening to? Are these people from the U.S. or expatriates here in europe or how does that the the, the cutest people alive the, the the girl listening to this podcast um, <laughs> watching this stream. um our audience are just like us various versions of us just in different places i think mm-hmm. um because a lot of times now that we have enough of them they're the ones actually like tagging us and stuff on twitter being like we need to check this out or sending us links or like telling us insane stuff happening in the Faroe Islands, things like that. Um, Yeah, so in terms of, like, where they're coming from, uh, we don't really know. Um, All I can say is that our largest audience is in the U.S. I think we actually have a couple Mm -hmm. of people who are, like, German, Norwegian, or stuff, like, who have moved to the U.S. Yeah. Um, And then our second largest audience is, like, then Germany and then the Netherlands. The Netherlands, yeah. yeah. The Dutch love us. Big, the Dutch. <laughs> Interesting. The Dutch love us. Hate. It, yeah, because we, we ragged on Volt too much, probably. Uh, uh, we uh, No, the other secret to getting the Dutch to like you is to constantly insult the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> they... <laughs> yeah, but it's and, like, uh, also, like, quite European yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. But it was, it was definitely... Um, at least my intention as an American being like, w- we do not just want to have an American audience and happen to be here. Yeah. Like I was like yeah. insisting that we like find, um, yeah, we have like a diverse audience, even if it's, if, even if we stay small at first. Um, and I guess that was, 
relatively successful because people listen to us. Um, mm-hmm. I did go on the Chapo Trap House Reddit, and I would just find people writing in different languages and just mass. You would just spam. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, where we have found that. some 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 close friends actually to this day, like yeah. you know, yeah. long time long time followers and listeners. So yeah, and people that started um, podcasts as well, which is uh, yeah, really yeah, fun. There's the people who have started podcasts in Germany and in and and uh, uh, um and Czech Republic, like we said. Right. Uh, um, small preview because it has been mentioned in the chat. I know that there is a Nordic inspired podcast Ooh. spinoff of ours happening, uh, um, to cover the the five terrible countries up north <laughs> and yeah that's which just fills our hearts with just so much joy and happiness still waiting happens. for the latvian word oh i get the latvian <laughs> Please, one yeah. i want that <laughs> it's, it's impossible <laughs> uh, <laughs> i've seen some antifa stickers in riga before. Uh, it could happen they were in German, though. So. What's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> All Antifa and Latvia are just Germans who visit. Yeah. Uh, Germans who study medicine, because yeah. that is what Latvia is for, for the Germans. So. Yeah. They can't get into medical school here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Latvian so, yeah, medicine is just different. It's, like, yeah, it's like a big thing of German, German medicine. Latvia's podcast. <laughs> there you go, Latvia's podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um... Yeah, interesting. Uh, my question was, I was coming, exactly, I wanted to talk about um, your, uh, one, one of you mentioned that there wasn't really any left podcasting scene around when you started. And I would just be interested as you are like kind of the oldest in the game right now, because I, I've talked to quite a few podcasts and quite a few. Wasn't um, Hype Scene is older than? Uh, well, Hype Scene is older than you, 2019 Hype Scene. I think they also started oh. 2020. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> Time has flown because we've been in our rooms for two years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, one 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 of, one of the one of the older, uh, more seasoned uh, crews, definitely. Very seasoned. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how how do you like how do you see this developing? Um, what what would be uh, like your uh, yeah let's say judgment over the German media leftist media landscape? How do you see? Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't let Nick, Nick talk. Because <laughs> <'Cause> my <laughs> no, I, I think I'll just say something about like um, podcasting purely before jumping into to um, like left podcasting specifically. Um, is we're pointing out that like podcasting is like stupidly old, like older than I right. think a lot of people sure. think. It's like the reason 90s. it's called po- yeah, like, the reason yeah. it's called po- podcasting is it's as old as like iPods basically right. um yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. you would get them on your ipod oh. yeah. and th- th- that's when they were called podcasting but these kind of shows that you can download from the internet right. yeah basically like a on-demand radio you already had them like 97 98 seriously yeah, yeah. yeah. so like the oh. <laughs> but the thing is like because um america is like a tech early adopter and also all the tech companies that basically run the world are all american um like they started at first and when they started it it was a bit more like punk in in, in like not to be a poser again but like, like pirate, <laughs> pirate radio like yeah like pirate yeah. radio doing like like the thing that happens in europe like like uh, germany as well but ireland was definitely this as well is like every podcast is just like brought to you by like a major show on like zdf or mm-hmm. like Right. Um, a lot of the Ireland was just like radio shows, just like recorded and put out later as a podcast. Like Europe was st- is still kind of missing. It's like coming now, still missing this whole idea. Like you can just be a bunch of jackasses in a room and make a podcast. It doesn't. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not in Germany. You gotta yeah, be serious in Germany. Like, <laughs> it has to be sponsored by like Tinder or like. <laughs> Adak or something like a major like, insurance company or something. I don't know. It's like, uh, <laughs> Russian uh, dating Tinder. fails or dating in the there was a Tinder Pender. podcast. I know, I know, yeah. I know. It's like, tell oh, me about it. Was it Tinder podcast? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, um, I, think, I think just kind of like to piggyback on Kieran exactly in that way is like, I don't think, I think because like we came in the sense of just from uh this environment that like Rob was talking about of that kind of already being at least for you know the english native speakers right. in the group just kind of having podcast much more as like a diy thing in the back of our head that we didn't really see i mean it wasn't intentional either we just like are four not completely stupid people who come together and you know 
get an okay, you know, Out of both our insurance companies. <laughs> yeah. So it is like, I mean, it, it sounds really dumb and it sounds like stupid as hell, but it really was just kind of like, I think we were just all surprised that Germans for the most part didn't want to take on the kind of just like, yeah, like DIY jackasses doing their, uh, there uh uh yeah like once a week because for me it's like therapeutic in a way i guess like the world's really dumb i can talk with my friends and that's it i mean like professionally i also do work as a journalist as well which is like kind of annoying but this is like (laughs) the one time of the week or twice a week where i could just kind of be like yeah all this bullshit that's going on is bullshit And yeah, you can't it, do that in like <laughs> uh, on the job. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I mean, I I could write like you know someone in my job that, but I wouldn't be having a job for much longer. <laughs> right. like, yeah, that's bullshit. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, can't, I can't comment. You know, yeah, I, I I can't comment while you know covering a, a live NATO summit, being like, yo, this fuck NATO. This <laughs> yeah. No fucking drip. He's a pussy. Like I can't do that. <laughs> can, we, can we get some fuck NATOs going in the chat? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. We can. I can even. I can even uh, post my own. Wait, wait a second. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what the heart's going <laughs> for. Uh... <laughs> the heart's for me. <laughs> oh, I was like, no, the that's, really... like a, that's like the sticky <laughs> note that's gonna stay down there. The really dark thought was just like, let's the heart's going for the Munich bombing. I was like, no, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like NATO. I don't know. This is the thing I think of. <laughs> Stop uh, it. We let. Like... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's like, cause like we all have different like things that we do during the week as like our normal jobs. Right. So it is really like, I mean, we're not all continuously preoccupied with the show. Sure. But it is, it is something that then is, is at least for us because of the nature of it, because I guess we do it by ourselves that it just kind of remains this way for us. I don't, I don't want to change it. I like having it be this, this kind of hangouty vibe that we have. I'm still like kind of fascinated that people are listening to our show. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, why would you? Because we're great. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. We've, like, we've like, we've like, we've like professionalized the show a bit since yeah, we definitely, started, but definitely. the general vibe is still kind of the same. You know, I, so I think like the, folk don't fix it, right? I, I I actually noticed you quite late, so that's also why I haven't listened to so much, uh, so many of your episodes. Actually, I cross listened to a couple before the session, um, and I saw that you. Like I, it's just impressive the um, broadness of stuff that you're dealing with, right? So you're going quite into depth when it comes to German politics, obviously, and then you're going to all these other international topics. But then you have like episodes on Islamo leftism uh, in in France or something like this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, oh, that's it. Yeah, it that's... sounds like like the stuff that I heard sounds like a crazy amount of prep that goes into this yeah, <laughs> That's I, good. yeah. No, we don't do anything we just freeze no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um i mean yeah the 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 probably the longest piece of work is actually just preparing for the episode and you also just want to be true like germany is probably the easiest thing because we live here and we're just constantly bombarded with Right, German shit. You can't turn it off. Uh, you can't. You can't, make, yeah, you can't make it go away. Um, and then I can't, I can't unlearn German. Unfortunately, I've tried. Uh, no, but 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 even there, I must say, look, I'm I'm German born. I'm from Berlin. Uh, I, I'm okay. I'm how ha- I'm not really German. My father is Palestinian. My mother is Polish. So I have like a migrant background. So it's a different, maybe a little bit different connection. But I'm quite up to date about what's happening in Germany, et cetera. But like the amount of depth of, you know, uh, stuff that you present there, um, I, I think I could easily sit down and just learn from you about German politics. <laughs> no you problem. Gotta, you, gotta make it fun. you gotta like, I mean, I mean this, I mean this one part as a joke and one part also seriously is that the thing that then really kind of kept me paying attention was finding continuous characters for me to just mm. like deep dive and enjoy because German politics as a whole the way it's presented media wise, I think is just kind of like this country's like has its head so far up its ass that it doesn't seem to understand that <laughs> it is really That's funny. Your... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, with having, like the way that then like particularly US media and, and English language media like focused in on Germany this last year for the elections right. was like embarrassing for the largest economy of um you know, Europe not really having anyone who didn't speak German 
who was reporting on it know what they were talking about. Right, right. I think and they're all like letter- experts. <laughs> we, we, uh, there are some We are correspond- living in a socialist country yeah. now. Thanks socialist, to Olaf socialist, Scholz. Olaf Scholz, socialist. Yeah. <laughs> Germany is elected to socialist. Exactly. There are some, there are some like, in, like correspondents for English publications who are based here in Berlin who don't speak German. Because, oh, it, 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 it isn't even just like some, it's a general overwhelming majority yeah. of them, which is so stupid. So I don't want to like toot our horn and think that we're like better than the people at like The Economist or Politico, but we are. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> because we fucking speak German and like, I I mean, except for Kira, no. but he's learning it. But I refuse. It really, like it really got really fun to like kind of look at, you know, German politics the way that like Americans look at their own politics because right. you then find the ridiculousness and it isn't to say that they're similar politically but it's like how do you guys not find like you know uh, Armin Laschet you know dumb child hilarious <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Joe Lashley. We love Joe. German Ryan <laughs> Gosling. <laughs> concept of like the German wine queen who then now yes. is, or not anymore, but the former government was the agricultural minister. Like this shit's really funny to us and it should be funny to you guys. And from a lot of Germans, they're like, oh yeah, never noticed a fucking ridiculous our country. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Will... Uh, go on, Rob. Sorry, you haven't spoken no, about it. I, well, I mean, I'm going to compliment you, so maybe, maybe that's that's good because I think the um especially with like the level of research and the scope i certainly couldn't keep up with it i know kieran is like indispensable for that with like keeping tabs on what's going on across europe and he's a freak so he's always done that it's, uh, a freak. it's true no nick, it's true it's 100 true nick and, nick and yulia uh, know so much about yeah i think a lot of like world politics especially what's going on in like the whole in eastern europe and the balkans and stuff that yeah i don't know I like to think I, I read a little bit, but my like all like the, the reason I think I th- uh, it could the reason I think it worked. And when I first thought it could work is because we all have a similar approach to how we like learn about living here, too. And I know this is very similar for Nick, which is like I like to read, but I've learned the most about Germany by just being in absurd situations in this country sure. and like just figuring out how people act same like what like what it's been awkward since i was born here yeah. <laughs> just just and, today um, just today i heard an anecdote yeah. from a from a friend of mine american also uh-huh. and she told me about someone in her building had thrown some paper package into the paper garbage but has like they didn't they but, didn't oh fold. didn't fold it down yeah, yeah you, you can't do that so 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 she took it this person took the thing out of the garbage yeah. and brought it into the entry hall <laughs> put it on the floor and wrote a big letter who did it, it, a typed letter on the computer it was printed and typed what? <laughs> <laughs> saying so saying Please fold the thing before you put it in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Germany's finally going to get its own Zodiac killer. Uh, <laughs> we had that too. At <laughs> why, like, is, why is cannibalism so common in Germany? Oh, that's like, the, I, don't, don't look at the back. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. I, we have several cases of that. Like, yeah, okay, it's off it's, Germany, it's, it's, like, yeah, yeah, it's also like, it's not a lot. It's just more than other <laughs> 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 yeah, I think that like to put it into context as well is that like uh, is uh, uh, like Rob and I's interactions I think are probably the closest to where that I will just send Rob like TikToks of a German person just doing something, <laughs> <laughs> and it shouldn't be something that's like out of the ordinary. But I'm just like, yo, Rob, this is like like this is a real life one of your characters or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's actually kind of funny, like for me, it being on that podcast because, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know. I'm like, it's exa- used to yeah. That. I mean, like, <laughs> I, I thought about like how could this podcast work if I were to go back to Ireland? Like, if I were to make one that was for Ireland, it was like I'd have to do it with people who weren't Irish. Exactly. It's the only yeah. way right. it could work. Yeah. Right. Um, I, sorry, just another one that just jumps to my mind. My I met my sister today. Her kid, she has a seven seven months old boy, and her kid, her his tongue turned black. Like completely black. The whole tongue was covered with something black. So she, of course, she flipped, right? Yeah. yeah. So she runs to the hospital. You can't have the goth phase. Come on. Like, <laughs> she runs. To, she runs to the hospital and 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 gets to the doctor. There are not many people there because nobody's going to the hospital because of the pandemic. Hmm. So the the doctor gets to her and the doctor's like, "Wow, we, we have, I've never seen something like that." 
<laughs> I have to I have to talk to this and this expert. So they call the you know, pedi expert. pediatric uh, uh, expert. Get half an hour waiting, the doctor comes back and says, yeah, it's this and this condition. It's nothing serious. It's just a bacterial infection. The doctor didn't know about this, has never seen this before, and now says to my sister, it's not really something that you had to come to the hospital for, is it? Like it's Corona times. Why? Why did you come? I printed out this note for you. Uh, Normally, something on your body turns like like a certain color or something. It's falling off. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta say though is that like even like even with as bad as like the health care is in the united states and it's really bad i've never like been more embarrassed than when i go to a doctor or hospital in germany because of exactly that reaction they don't take so I, you like, seriously yeah exactly like i went to the er for like cutting my hand open and then just like walked out being like i i'm i'm a wimp i can take care of this myself <laughs> Uh, in the US, in the US, they don't go because they can't pay, and you're like, no, I'm not yeah, taking yeah. the humiliation. It's a shame-based <laughs> system. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, they don't what go because you get doctor? cheap prescribed. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the German healthcare system. Well, let's say you don't pay with money. <laughs> <laughs> with guilt. And yeah. Yeah. It's like, why no, are so you? Went, yeah. yeah, putting up with, with like blood all over my hand to the er i went i walked in i filled out the paperwork and everything sat there for 10 minutes and just like looked down at myself with shame and every time the doctors would come out just look at me give me a very weird look and i just knew that i wasn't going to be staying yeah. there so i just asked for a bunch of gauze and it just <laughs> <laughs> no i got this I, I once had a doctor telling yeah, oh, me dude. my pain was, was based on my <laughs> culture <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, which culture are you talking about? <laughs> like, <Jesus Christ. laughs> my pain is based on my culture. Maybe it's not real. Because uh, they, like, yeah, they didn't really do a good All like, Rhinish people uh, so. dream to be French secretly. <laughs> <laughs> this guild manifests yeah. in a particular way. Um oh my god. Okay, getting getting back to the, the podcast though before we sure. move too, too away from it. Um there are there are like from hearing that there's talk that I, I think is important that uh, is why we kind of have to be like punk media, why we have to like not have associations with like proper organizations actually going out there and doing good work is because we need the, the runway to kind of be uh, like esoteric and just be like irreverent and ridiculous because we do need to be able to like make comparisons to like the various failure children of like, uh, um, of various German politicians to like, I don't know, anime characters or people in the rap game or something like we, like, this is just something you just can't like do on mainstream media. Um, when you're supposed to be serious. Yeah. You're meant to be serious. You're meant to like, everything has to be about politics, like capital P politics, like what's happening in the Bundestag, mm -hmm. whatever, rather than like, actually, no, it's all connected. I will make a comparison to like an anime I watched recently or something. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, and the other thing that I'm still really proud of, because a couple of episodes ago, I, I, I got really into like um, just catching up on what Vox Media in the States is doing. Hmm. And the thing that I come away from that is just like, it's so condescending. They treat the entirety of their audience like children. And that is something we try not to do. <laughs> like... It sounds a little bit like this funk thing. Do you know? Do you know about that? Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. podcasting thing of the of the ZDF, yeah. the yeah. Yeah, Fair enough. Yeah. But it it is just very like treating the audience like children, which I think is like something you should just like not do with internet media because you're like you're listening to this on your phone. If there's something we're yeah. referencing, you don't make sense. You can Google it. Like yeah. no shame. <laughs> Admit you don't know something. It's fine. Uh, I know I don't know lots of things. Same. Everyone who listens to our show is a genius. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I think something that uh, I certainly struggle with, I think, I hope we do a good job with it, is that it's easy to, especially when we're talking about ridiculous characters, not like Joe Lashett, because fuck him, but like just any, like when we're laughing about a typical uh, German or a typical Italian or something. Yeah. And I, I hope it comes through because it's 100% how I mean it it comes from like a place of like deep love. Like this is like, it's very funny. Yeah. And I like, yeah. I, except I for the in... garbage lady. Nah. <laughs> garbage, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about the garbage lady, but like the funniest <laughs> parts to me are just like that. We're all like, yeah, again, laughing about kind of the absurdity of, um, of our society. Um, that's yeah. where it comes from for me. And that only really, it's only really funny if you can laugh at yourself too. Right. Like it's, 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 
So how yeah. how do Germans react to that? Because my I mean my my experience is that they are, they are not they don't really have that kind of gene for humor, especially about themselves. Yeah, why am I on this? <laughs> I don't know. Like I mean, maybe this is like maybe this is why like our our show kind of maybe has like a natural plateau in Germany. Possibly, I don't know. Maybe there's a reason why other countries find us funnier than Germany. Mm -hmm. Um, it isn't just the fact that then like Germans have no humor that like that. No, no, that's not what I meant. I mean, I meant specifically yeah, no, no, no. humor yeah, yeah. about themselves, right? So they, they... yes, yeah, I think I think it. I mean, like I think it's more so in the fact that then that it's just like I mean, Yulia, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like there's like a attitude <laughs> around how Germans interact with the politics around them that if you make fun of it, that it's yeah. like you're succeeding <laughs> to a different like. You're not even just like that. You're like you're 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 like it's like a low blow. It's like you're not taking the severity of German history, which is like we right. obviously do. Yeah. You know, like yeah. something that then makes it, I think, really easy to make fun of Germany is how just like oblivious they are to that. I don't know. That's at least my opinion. Of like, I, I was talking with a friend about this today. Of just like the the stupidity of that, like the march that the military did for the Afghan, you know, troops coming back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who the hell thought that was a good idea? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's the obvious sense that then that you can point out, like, that's Nazi crap. And it's like, yeah, okay, it looks like it. But just the fact of the absurdity of it makes it, like, really easy to make fun of, like, on top of all the levels of, like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. But the fact they did it is really kind of I mean, Akaka kind of had to say that, like, oh... We did something good there. <laughs> like, yeah. Look, we we I brought mean, some. Like, Germany, yeah, yeah. Germany can't just like take the big L. We brought some companies that can take one hundred percent of their profits out of the country. Yeah, <laughs> look, was... this was great. <laughs> like it benefited Germany at least. I mean, I, I I would say that like that's a that's a global phenomenon of yeah. just like every country that was involved in Afghanistan, which was a lot. Yeah. Um, just not really willing to accept that the outcome of this is you lost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's I why think... they had to do it. It's yeah. kind of like if you do a ceremony afterwards. Like if right. this was if this was a proper proper war where there was actually an objective, like the way wars were done in like I don't know before World War Two, basically, where you're like we have a goal, we take Berlin, you know that kind of thing. It's just like no, because wars aren't about that anymore. It's right. just like. Yeah. So therefore, no one can win, but also no one can lose. It's a strategic retreat, or we pulled out of Afghanistan. You lost. You fucking lost. <laughs> it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a, that's the spectacle level of, of the whole thing, right? So you, yeah. you, 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 have a, you have a like the bourgeois narrative, basically, of what this war is, why we went mm -hmm. in there, what we tried to achieve. Support and democracy course, by bringing uh, cap, like, uh, economic freedom. Yeah, exactly. factory and of course, that no of Afghans course, can actually work in. Yeah. Of course, nobody, I mean, after 20 years, even if you don't have to be a leftist, right? Barely anybody from the center, even in Germany, yeah. believes in this crap anymore. Young and young. <laughs> They're the only ones. <laughs> right. And but uh, but then but then you still have to kind of like as media, they still have to kind of buy into this and play the charade because that's that's how they set it up. But in the end, I I don't yeah, I I don't believe I think, that this is what it's sort of about, really. No, I I think that though that's like kind of the like, like I don't wanna like No, please, you know, please go ahead and criticize yeah, yeah. me. I think that there's like I think that Germans don't want to accept the legitimacy of their media doing this they think it's like oh they would know better but it's like no like the cards have been reshuffled right. there is like a new idea of that then like of of a, a reverting back to the u.s being good now that trump's out the overwhelming majority of like media in germany is obviously very right wing you just had four years of not liking the u.s because of trump but you still liked all the institutions and everything with it too now there's like it's back to that and you see like you know, now that we're not under a conservative government, I mean, depending on what your definition of it is, oh, it's still, it's like falling in, <laughs> yeah, whatever, you know, big things, big dreams happening in, in Berlin, as Rob would obviously mm. agree to. <laughs> the reality of it is then that we, that we live in a media landscape in a very right-wing country that then is currently under a more centrist government, and you're seeing that actually come to, like, reality that then Germany's media landscape looks far more like the United States is Absolutely. than they yeah. actually, like, want to admit, you know? Right. And so it's like, 
yeah, like I would agree that then maybe like the average German has the opinion of like, yeah, that one was dumb. But the narrative, it isn't even so much I would say that it's just like, like there's no wool being pulled over German's eyes anymore. It's just simply the sense of like, there is a good portion of, of a very powerful part of the population that believes this like bullshit Atlanticist. You can see that with the Ukraine situation right now. Yeah, like, I think the majority of Germ Germans would say, like, oh, yeah, why don't we deliver weapons to Ukraine? Like, why don't we, you know, like, support our <laughs> brothers in arms, <laughs> which is NATO? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, they, I see so many people, like, criticizing, like, I mean, the reason that Olaf Scholz is not doing that of course it's not because he he says like oh we're we're not we're not delivering any weapons any lethal weapons to any country for like so long <laughs> which is of course bullshit because like when he was finance minister and vice uh, chancellor under Merkel and then the last month of of Merkel's um chancellorship, chancellorship yeah um, they just pulled a deal with Egypt, like a big one, who are involved in Yemen and in, in, in yeah. Yeah, of course. And <laughs> those are all, those are all, you know. And, those, those yeah, are, as long yeah. as you don't supply it to, like, the, con like, as long as the war is not in that country, you're supplying the weapons. I, I think, it's, <laughs> I think, like, uh, the, to even pair back and make it more stupid, like, because this reminds me of, like, Germany's response to both, like, Iraq and Afghanistan. It's just like, we won't support wars that are in the news. <laughs> the the yeah. wars that are not, let's just go crazy. Just give it to a party that is involved in a war in a different country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, to, just to just to add to this, so I just googled really quick. YouGov made a made a uh, just just an interesting fact. They made a um, Umfrage. What's Umfrage, Julia? Umfrage. A survey. Like a, a survey. Yeah. Exactly. Survey. Yeah. Fifty nine percent of the Germans are actually against li delivering weapons to Russia. Yeah. Uh, to, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, I was wrong <laughs> with that one. Then. No, I'm, but I'm, in general, I think Afghanistan and Iraq. I think this initial, I mean, they, they were on this 100%. And I think if this would were yeah. to happen again, they were on it also. Yeah, exactly. They would be on it yeah. also. But I think now after 20 years, after seeing how that panned out, I think it's just... <laughs> you think they learned? There, there's all, but no, it's not there's about learning. Like, it's I just about... Yeah. yeah so I think there's also something to be said to be like, it's Ukraine. It's like right. next door. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we, like, Germany is still kind of like, or Germ like, conservative Germany is still very, like, shocked by the consequences of Iraq and Afghanistan in, in the form of the so called refugee crisis. Uh, it wasn't a crisis because there was a very easy solution to it that no one took. Um, but, like, then I don't, like, the idea of asking them to do that again with a country that borders. A country that has open, like an open border policy via the EU, with like that—that's just like something I don't think they want to entertain, even. Um, and Ukraine yeah. is also kind of a kind of a subject to culture war issues here in Germany too. You know, sure. it's like this this whole Russia uh, conspiracy theorists, querdenker guys, yeah, Pegida yeah. guys, AfD guys against <laughs> the you know the bourgeois guy. middle, <laughs> bourgeois center basically. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and, topic because uh, you have like different sides of the political spectrum actually being against the like germany providing weapons. right yes because, uh, if you like listen to the bundestag debate it was actually like arguments coming from die linke like Gregor Gysi, etc but also like from the afd guys like, for sure saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Putin and uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. There's some weird uh, shit going on with russia like germany's relationship with russia is like something i mean that that defines all of German history, though. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yes. <laughs> no, that's true, actually. Yeah. How do we handle this giant country next door to us? Next door. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's bring this maybe a little bit to, I mean, we talked a little bit about Germany and the German podcasting scene in specific, but maybe, I mean, you also deal, of course, with politics, but you deal also with the left and, you know, Whatever that is, dealing with the left, <laughs> either the party or the left as a as a as a movement or as a societal, um, I don't know, group of people. Um, so, what's your what's your coming from the US? At least the three of you, uh, and comparing this also to all the other the other scenes that you cover with your podcast. I mean, other countries, yeah. other areas. What's your impression of the state of the German left? <laughs> either the party or the um, the movement. Yeah. I, I, I just like will quickly say that, I mean, this isn't for everyone in the group, but for me, I don't associate with like, like I go out of my way not to deal with the German left. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I find them incredibly uninviting. Um, I find them really problematic. And I've heard from a lot of other people who are from other countries, not even just the United States, but um, who've had to deal with the German left or just being like, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like, the left has problems everywhere, but I feel that there's just like a very like weird vibe here. Tell, tell me more. That what's the, what's the uninviting part? How they uh, how they uh, how are they alienating? Yeah, um, yeah. Just like generally, just like uninviting. And I'd, if anyone's gonna go and be like, oh, it's because you don't speak German. It's like, <laughs> no, I, do, I do speak I, German. Just not. Die Linke. Like... <laughs> Say it, Nick. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, this is like other groups I've heard from other friends as well that they yeah. had similar problems, and even with organizations that they're supposed to be like, you know uh like non-white spaces x y you know they still kind of end up like default to this very germanness so i don't associate with it i just like doing what we do here if it can resonate with people in one way or another then that's fine but i really have like i i I have, I have, I have other shit going on in my life. <laughs> like, okay. I like to provide this as a thing to like. I, I'm politically left wing. Um, I don't like hanging around. Uh, only people for solely political mm -hmm. reasons. Like, I kind of like. I care, but I just like don't want to deal with politics in this country because I haven't really found it fun. Right. So you are dealing with politics <laughs> in this country. I mean, it's just, <laughs> we know what you mean. Yeah. 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 Is, is this the same for you guys, like uh, Karen, Karen uh, Rob? Like, do, were you also like kind of alienated by the German left? Were you like feeling that you don't? Was belong? I alienating you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Julia bullies me. <laughs> <laughs> she sits like slightly behind you, and I imagine she yeah. kicking you all the time or something. <laughs> yeah. You can't see under the, 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 the feet. <laughs> Me. Um, puts our fingers in Chinese fingers. <laughs> so, the, like, I was genuinely limited by language. Like, that was actually a problem for me. Like, I don't speak German. Right. Uh, not to a level that I would be competent getting into, like, serious political discussions. Um, but, like, in terms of German left stuff being unwelcoming, I would say that's maybe I get, like, the kind of, like, autonomous groups that kind of arose in the 90s got very, very cliquey and very into like oh you can't work with that autonomous group because this autonomous group hates That's them <laughs> yeah and it, it just became like you you stumble into this huge network and like uh, like high school drama kind of stuff to a certain extent that being said i think there's like left movements in this in this country that have tried to do like broader church kind of attitudes towards the german public or like the people in this country they've been relatively welcoming to me but like i have to like tune into groups that um have like english speaking or right. foreigner groups um for example fao have been very welcoming the d link internationals branch have been very welcoming to me as well um yeah so uh but i do know what nick is talking about there is like especially in berlin i, I feel like that's like berlin and i also get that impression from like dresden dresden also has like a lot of that very like cliquey old leipzig Leipzig, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leipzig, that was what I was thinking. Uh, I wish Dresden. Yeah, Rob has been a bit more active, yep. and maybe. Um, I I'm actually I don't know if it's because I'm optimistic, but I actually think the German left because it's going through a bit of a transformation now. Not not limited to podcasts like yours. Um, I'm actually quite uh, optimistic. Like I think there's actually a lot. And, and you're building from a base that a lot of other countries don't have. And so, like, I, I think there's actually a lot, a lot of positives there. Um, I think the, I understand where, where Nick and Kieran are coming from. And maybe I can try to, like, give my own story. Because I was not uh, a leftist in the U.S. And it's not that I wasn't. I just, like, the, the default, like, because I was interested in politics. But I think at some point, like, pretty early on, I realized it's, like, the only... Honestly, the only moral thing was to become a political, a political capital P political, because the available options to like do politics all were bullshit. And I think if you like even are honest with yourself for half a second, you you realize that. And part of the reason I, um, uh, I mean, and I think moving here, all of this left podcasting uh, we've talked about, all the changes since right. 2016, um, the 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 validity of. Uh, the, the standard narratives of uh, politics in the United States just being shattered, um, which also goes to, not to get sidetracked a bit, but uh, it's not so much also, I'm being very generous to the Germans here, it's not so much that Germans can't take a joke, but like 
you know, I would probably like I could understand people believing in the like validity of, you know, normal politics if you didn't have Trump as your president for, you know, but, like once you have that, it's like, come on, why, why aren't we laughing about this? Like, why are you even believing in all this shit? And I think that makes people a lot more receptive to um, maybe a new kind of critique. Um, so, you know. We'll see in France, you know, maybe. <laughs> I, I think I want to, um, before Yulia talks um, about it as like the German here, yeah, yeah, I would yeah. also say that in general, while I was agreeing with Nick about like why there's some groups I just kind of avoid in, in this country and city, I am also kind of optimistic about Germany's left. I think like even like if we're going to talk about Die Linke, like electoral left specifically, I do think like what just happened to Die Linke is kind of like a growing pain and moving in a direction that I'm actually optimistic about and shedding a uh, um, a kind of an over-reliance on like an East German identity rather than a working class identity. Um, because, yeah, they were very dependent on like East. Like, I feel like there was like East German landlords who would vote Die Linke just because they were pissed about like what was happening to East Germany. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm also optimistic for things like Migrantifa, Deutsche von Cohen Teignan. Yeah. Like, there is a lot of really good stuff happening in this city and country. So um, I'm just tired, <laughs> personally. Uh, I, I Wait, I just want to, like, I think what it is is that, like, I have never liked the identity of being a political person or, like, a leftist. Right. Like, that just seemed like, I mean, I don't like, I mean, come on, like, like labels in general. Oh, it's just like, what? It didn't, it didn't feel <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like, if that's what yeah. you're... And, like, uh, uh, to yeah. that... <laughs> If, if, that, if that's but if that's what like you're in it for which a lot of people are then <laughs> that will always lead to to a certain uh a certain outcome and so like yeah i, I think it takes a long process that, that, that can also be a trap in itself right where you're just always critical you're always like detached from everything but i think like the only organic process which um i think the reason people were inspired by someone like michael brooks for example is because it's that ongoing cycle of like breaking down uh, the, the illusions and the hypocrisy about something but also giving you like making it okay to to care and to be vulnerable to um under like to to almost encourage you to change right and to do the things you need to do that might be hard but that you you want to do like if you believe in this you have to do this this and that it might be hard but this will <laughs> it'll be worth it in the long run and um it's been i think it's rewarding for people to to do those things but by definition you won't hear people talk about it right in the same way like you might catch wind of it but like if people are marketing it then that's the the bad kind of politics <laughs> right and so that's that's yeah kind of I, I, I think to way. rob's point about the labels i also think that's why like you get that reaction because i i don't think it's exclusively german but i think anyone who kind of like absorbs this idea of like purely this identity as like a leftist a socialist a communist and like this is my whole thing and nothing else then it becomes very hard to joke like it just becomes hard yeah. to yeah. be irreverent because yeah. those are serious topics like yep. yeah i would like a better world <laughs> <laughs> yep that's also why that's why i mean that's, that's also one of the topics that i'm constantly addressing in the in the podcast and the segments that we do ourselves which is this tendency, and I think that's not only German, but Germany, I notice it a lot, uh, this tendency to make the politics your your identity. And then the fights also become identitarian yeah. in the sense of that anytime, anytime that someone could yeah. critique, we had, we had it on the last episode, anytime that someone brings up a critique, like let's say a critique of a movement, all right, you, you, you mentioned Mikantifa or you mentioned uh, Deutsche Wund and Eigen. So we can, we can bring critiques, right? And we can talk about maybe we should have done it in another way or anytime this, this happens, the guns immediately come out. Yeah. And and the discussion the discussion is not I mean I, I understand that everybody can be heated about it but the discussion ceases to be about the topic and it's more about me and you you know feel and, that also too one of the things I noticed that's like really different about Germany in comparison to the U S because like as Rob said of like the way that you approach politics and the way that you come into it's way different in the U S I mean I, for weirdly as not similar of you know where Rob and I are from in terms of the country you can like avoid politics pretty well in your teenage years uh until college you can pretty much go about being you know what's going on like in terms of the news but you don't like politics don't really have at least <clears throat> i think for the both of us they weren't like a central point in like our teenage years where i feel that then in germany particularly at least in like bigger metropolitan areas but even yulia i know from like her growing yeah. up 
um, there is like an obvious like hint of the thing I don't like is that you're very it's very clear that someone that a lot of these people got into politics in their teenage years and it like yeah. never faded away. I mean it's a lot of the times it's connected to a subculture like yeah. right. all the autonome group yes. or something like right. autonomous. Like, I joined Antifa joined Antifa. <laughs> I was in like Antifa Antifa membership card. membership card. Like, <laughs> card when I was like 14, 15 or something like that. Yeah. So like no I but I used to hang out at all these autonomous like spaces like IOZ or something like that in Bielefeld or or like squatted houses in Luna. They had a squatted house there. <laughs> Wild. Oh. <laughs> Only in Germany. In <laughs> in little Luna have a squat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it has a lot to do. Like, I don't know. And there's like still this like teenage punk movements that leads to at some point like getting serious about the politics and but also like 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 a lot of the times it develops into like anarchist movements or something like that. And I, I feel like it, it's more strong, like it, uh, no, it's stronger as a subculture identity kind of thing in, in your teenage years. And a lot of the times, and also, I mean, in Germany, I mean, we've talked about that a lot before. If you consider them leftist, that is something else. But like anti-Deutsche are like a major part of, of the German left. And it's nice to see like other groups now growing and yeah. like actually critiquing this like which is like a basically everyone when they are in their youth get into these kind of groups you know because yeah. it's yeah. like how like that, that was that was also quite similar in ireland ireland is like a weird mix between these two scenarios because ireland also has like two dominant parties that aren't even divided by left and right uh, uh controlling a lot of the like upper level of politics and then like the only way to really get into the left before the age of like, especially before the financial crash, uh, which radicalized a lot of people like in 2008, um, like a lot of that was through like the punk scene, basically. Yeah. And it's very subcultural. It can get yeah. very cliquey as well. Um, like, yeah. I think you don't have that in the US like that because like here, the punk scene was very big in the 80s and the 90s and stuff like that, you know, yeah. and we have the UK and like, next door and shit like that yeah and I mean, you, have, exactly. you have high school and college part that's different the politics yeah, yeah. behind that are different the politics behind that are like nice broths and and <laughs> and beer i don't know <laughs> we, we we get all of this from What's watching the oc <laughs> like with a2 music yeah, videos like, but not that far off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But i mean like those things that you can though do though in the u.s i feel that you can do them much more like removed from politics mm -hmm. um there and it could just yeah. be it could just be out of just size mm -hmm. you know like i I mean, I played music all throughout, like, high school yeah. and shit. And politics did not remotely cross its head into playing metal in Arizona. I mean, if it did, it was always, like... I mean, because that was, like, that was like the early 2010s, like, late 2000s. So, like, some loser kid tried to, like, make, like, a Christian rock band or whatever, you yeah. know? Like, <laughs> it was that time. Like, if you call that, then, like... But no band was doing, like... Yeah, like there wasn't like a, a thing like. Uh, I mean, like uh, even in, even in punk scenes, we had it. Scene. It was it was it was mostly label rather than like a lot of people would call yeah, themselves yeah. like anarchists and like. Of course. But like none of but them had looks, like. It looks cool to it's have a the cool anarchist symbol. symbol. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like course, yeah. fucking red, okay. <laughs> but like no one, like none of them had ever read like I don't yeah. know the bread book or anything. I remember, yeah. I remember, like I used to wear like a black like top which had like a red anarchist yeah. like, symbol. Or oh, I had a sugar. Oh, yeah. We would have been best well. friends. We would have been best. <laughs> and I had I, I, so one of my friends and she asked me like in the car do you even know who this is or what anarchism means or something yeah. like that so I had to explain kind of and I, of course I was dumb it's like <laughs> no state no <laughs> like, I don't know I didn't oh, read that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Book should fucking shreds, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but also like Che Guevara, of course, like I try to inform, but I'm like, yeah, this is a cool dude. I didn't know fucking what happened. Like, yeah. I, I was 14. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. But exactly. that is also a thing about the German left. It's like instead of like giving you like uh, reaching like uh, reaching like giving you a hand or something like that. Yeah. It's a lot of the times it's criticizing you for not reading enough theory or right. 
thing for not being on on top of the game when it comes to I don't know a certain, a certain to topic to or a certain yeah. kind of terminology, which is like why you there's so many times like the discourse is removed from the actually like the actual actual like action, action. Yeah. yeah exactly so the discourse is like let's talk about this or let's talk about them instead of like involving people yeah. um, but also as you said like I see that there is like actually maybe we're heading into the right direction in the sense of mm, if you're looking at like SMI or something like that and how big mm. the outcome was and like the, the, the Migrantifa like organized one and like that now you have way more groups involved that normally would be kind of like ousted from from the, the discourse about the left in Germany because it was really focused on these kind of like autonomous like I had said kind of I always say I had said it's not that's the <laughs> specific I mean you had said like the Jugendzentrum the youth right. center yeah. kind right. of practice you know right which are mostly German, like, right. like in, yeah, and would not include other other groups of people, which are. Like, this definitely is all very, but, yeah. yeah. This is definitely all very much connected to the question that comes up every so often, which is why is the German left so white? Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is all very much tied into it. I feel. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I don't. I mean, like, like for me personally, I don't care if I'm not in german left spaces it doesn't really affect my well-being all that much i like you know i mean I, I'm, I'm i'm being real here of like i can exist in germany perfectly fine as like a white dude with a european passport like i i'm i'm, I'm killing it in berlin <laughs> but for people who want to like get engaged and like be seen and heard in like political groups here like yeah Ger I mean, it, maybe this is just a Berlin thing. Maybe it's an all of Germany thing. Again, you know, my exposure has just simply been through the city that I've lived in for the past eight years. Yeah, like Huron's right. They need to understand that it's not just Germans that they are dealing with. And they do need, need, need to be a lot more inviting. Because, like, yes, for someone like myself, I don't really care. For someone who then actually, like, needs, you know, help and assistance and, like, you know, needs a, like politics is just some way of you like kind of getting involved in like you know other you know social yeah. realities for yourself community yeah right yeah, yeah. you were actually mentioning FAO before yeah. and like the thing about for example the romanian uh, workers that worked yes, on workers, the mall yeah, yeah Ma mall of berlin or something like that like normally like a lot of german groups wouldn't like german white german like yeah. Uh, left yeah would not like get involved in these kind of topics a lot of the times like when i grew yeah when I grew up, when mm -hmm. I was in my teenage years or something like that. It's... I mean, that was that was actually something that I was very impressed with, with yeah. FAU, when I, like, uh, when I found out their international group was English-speaking, and I, I, like, genuinely, they're very good about welcoming people in, they take you on one, like, one-on-one, -on -one. they walk you around to talk and stuff, you get a coffee if you can, this was during lockdown. Um, and, we'll like, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I literally just asked, like, is English not, like, a problem of, like, maybe appealing too much to this like professional expat class mm. of berlin and they're actually like no the majority of people we're trying to reach are um people working in like rider services like you know delivery for and the majority south asian so they have like english as this common language even though like hindi and punjabi would be like their native language mm. um so i was like that that's great to hear but that's like that was really something that i was not seeing from a lot of other like I think to a lot of people in this city, based on the quality of Indian food here, people are not aware there's even a massive South Asian population. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm perfectly honest. Um, yeah. God, I miss Indian food from the UK and Ireland. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, have, yeah. I have some friends that told me that there is this one place that comes really close. Um, there, maybe... There's always this one place. It's uh, okay, always right. a lie. It's always bad. All right. All right. I won't tell you then. I won't tell you. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this was m way more optimistic than I expected. <laughs> about the state of the down, yeah. um, no, it's also see we're not that we're we're nice people. We laugh a lot. <laughs> no, it's also it's also because I'm not. I'm, I, I feel I'm not like especially lately not that optimistic because I mean, mostly. Yeah. I'm not either. I haven't, I haven't been outside in a week. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's no, shit. Like, you forget. You the, like major parliamentary like um, representation of the left. It looks like shit. <laughs> no, it's it's uh, it, this, this. I mean, okay, discard that. Like, if let's say, okay, I don't know. Let, let's even forget the party politics. But let's mm -hmm. just talk about the, um, the 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 general state of discourse in and throughout leftist groups. Mm -hmm. 
And what I see increasing, maybe this is just my, um, that's just my observation. And I, I got to say, it's also very much um, uh, influenced by social media, obviously, because now I'm on the podcast, right? So I get, I get all the yeah. stuff. Um, but I see these, what I call identitarian fights. Mm -hmm. And by this, I don't mean identity politics. This is something else, right? I mean, this idea that people are defending points because they are defending a sense of self, right? Yeah. Um, increasing. And in a, and my 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 like I assume that in the movement, if we had some kind of movement or we had we were moving in a direction of having a movement, these identitarian fights would actually decrease because we we would have this higher cost. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we would still be fighting and we'd still be arguing, but it, there wouldn't be this this toxic bullshit of I don't know what you like this post on Sarah Wagenknecht, you're out. You know? oh, yeah, yeah. Or, and, and you know, and I, I, I'm not a fan of Wagner. Like, by by, that's not the point, right? So the point is like that these kind of identitarian fights um, become more and more, and that actually uh, discourages me about the state that we are in. Um, yeah, but I, I think I was also thinking of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe like okay, Twitter of course makes it possible. Of course, sure. you know, say like, oh, Twitter's shit, the best. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, we can like, also talk about twitter yeah like this or follow this person or someone like it's it's also way easier to say something dumb on <laughs> on twitter sure. it's about my best friend um, all right oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that later <laughs> but i would also say like it, it was kind of like the experience that i had of course this was just a like small like small after circle in bielefeld which is not the biggest or like in in Ostwestfalen in general which is not of course the biggest uh, i don't know hochburg um, right but I mean, they, Bielefeld is quite solid when it comes to that. Um, right. But um, there, I always had the feeling there were always these kind of like in fights, definitely. Of course, it's like more visible on Twitter and it's more visible for everyone because now you can organize, you know, through the internet, et cetera, et cetera. You can see, you can follow your fellow lefties. Uh, <laughs> I, it wasn't like that before, but I, I always felt like, oh shit, oh, this person is way too emo to be like part of the cool anarchist group <laughs> yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. I mean, I don't, I don't know, but yeah. I mean, um, when, it, when it gets that small, also like... Uh, um, this is also experience in Ireland. Yeah. It can also be really related to who's sleeping with who. Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> absolutely. Like, a yeah. <laughs> I've seen mutual aid groups destroy. Yeah. <laughs> and again, that's. I mean, Deutsche Von, Deutsche Von and Eigner nearly broke on this shift. Oh I yeah, mean, true. It's, yeah. It's. Uh, yeah. I mean, and uh, you know, if you had like, think of. I don't know. I, I, I don't like to, make, to draw these historical parallels because, mm. of course, the situation is completely different. But think of the SPD, I don't know, 100 years ago mm. or the yeah, workers, were, the they, workers movement in German in this, in this time. They were all freaks. They were all <laughs> fighting. They were all not agreeing. They were writing, they were writing books uh, on each other yeah. and, and, and cursing exactly. each other. We but they were still that's in the same freaking movement. And, 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 that's right. Yes. Right? Yeah. We need to bring that back. I need to write catty yeah. books about people yeah. in German. <laughs> No. You see I mean, the same shit in, in the US and the online leftists as well. You have so many yeah. of like yeah, someone yeah. other person said this or or like all the backlash Mark Fisher had, for example, right. at some point. Right. I, I actually, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. We know this is so lame too. Like, <laughs> you know, but like you say like, oh, you like think back a hundred years ago, the political diatribes, the SPD were writing about each other. And then I'm just like, didn't Zara Vagonek have like a best-selling book that was just like dissing Dilinka? <laughs> like, so I'm like, yes, yeah, yeah, we have a chase. <laughs> and like Lenin on the it's yeah. like that's her state. <laughs> yeah. Let me just, let me just, like, yeah, you know, but it's a really, it's a really bad book, man. It's really. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A hundred years ago, whatever the equivalent of a podcaster was saying the same thing. Yeah. No, I haven't read it for a long time, but then I, I was talking about it all the time on the podcast, and I always had to say that I didn't read it and it became embarrassing, so I. Forced myself uh, oh damn yeah sure it sure. hurt that's why i will yeah. never read anything for the show uh, <laughs> reading is too good don't do it uh there's only going to be hurt yeah, yeah no right. but I mean, like, in, all, in all seriousness i think to like the like continuous uh you know just stupid identitarian nonsense on the left of again uh i think that that's one of the uh the things that makes us appealing you know don't want to toot our own horn but we all come from like different backgrounds of the left and whatnot. All of like, I mean, like the thing of it is that then there are things that we disagree about that we don't do episodes about. Um, but the general consensus being that 
whatever you know this issue is or whatever we're trying to cover whoever's leading the episode or whatever it is like we have a like i again like i don't want to overstate this but like the continuous like shit that you see of kieran and myself posting about like new metal or like me posting about dumb rappers is me actually spending my like like time outside of doing this show i preoccupy my time with dumb stuff and then come to like talk shop with the gang and have a nice place to do it where like yeah i mean whatever like i may be uh you know uh uh i don't fucking know a yeah, exactly. We're all Hajas. And Rob, Rob, Rob is like, like absolutely true to, you know, Abdullah Ojalan's idea of leftism. Like, it's like, yeah, it yep. doesn't, it doesn't, at this point, I just will just tell people I'm a communist. Like, whatever the, like, sure. the, the base, like, it doesn't fucking matter to us. And it has made it at yeah. least a lot better for me of, like, not really caring like i think the infighting is funny i don't like it it does cause a lot of roadblocks but at the end of the day is like i find more common ground with like other people i know who are leftists um who i you know work with and and do this stuff and if that can work in this regard i mean yeah like i disagree with rob on certain things or with kieran or with yulia but it's like with me <laughs> with, yeah no actually with yulia probably actually the least but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it, it makes it like easier also to do that you just don't sound like a broken record of just like you know going off talking about like the same two or three things with the same people that you always talk politics with right like, it is it, it remains like enjoyable i think that way Yep, um, I'm. Uh, let's say it like this. Um, my uh, my worry and, and what I'm preoccupied with of late is that, I mean, one one could just you know take these identitarian fights and say and and but pull a lot of the blame and I think rightly so on on social media and Twitter etc. Um, but the 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 observations that i've i make make me question whether all these people that are in these groups are actually in for the same because there is an assumption that oh we just have these differences and if we just sat together and if we read uh, you know talk together and we be a bit no, more no, polite no, 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 right? i'm not saying that at all i don't there's no like there's no kumbaya there's no this there's, there's no, <laughs> okay okay i'm not putting no, this in your mouth yeah, yeah. No, no, right. no. there is right. there are like actual differences that then do like split these people up and the right. thing of it is like i and I mean, like, I think the biggest one that then I just kind of gave up with all this bullshit on was the the Deutsche Wohnen one, which I'm not, we're not going to get into depth of it, but just like the defenses that were coming to again with certain this and there's just like, again, it, it looked like clicky bullshit. Yeah, I from there, gonna, from there, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to get. I know that I'm not going to like. Oh, you know, as the as the you know the one who sees like the truth and all. It's just like, yeah, I'll let them exist in that regard, but I do think that there's an overwhelming like part of the left who doesn't really like i don't care who these people are no one like i don't like i literally like don't find like anyone within this country that i'm mean, like because you realize how small like the political sphere of the left is here yeah sure. i don't like there's no like i the u.s has at least people that then like i look up to and i'm like oh, okay yeah like they're like you know i respect their opinion i don't respect anyone's opinion in germany <laughs> so. it really is just kind of like you know uh, like, julia's, yeah. julia's opinion julia's opinion you're right. <laughs> Yeah, but she's she's on my show. It doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> you're, you're you're on her show, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Don't get it twisted. Uh, but yeah. what, one last question, maybe it's already one and a half hours, guys. And maybe I'm taking too oh, no. much of your time. Um, uh, but I, but I, one last question then: What do you think? Like, if you were to be optimistic about the potential impact of your podcast, your work, and I'm asking for myself too, because we are also in this, not only because it's self therapy, but it's also this <laughs> for sure. Um, but we are also in there because we think we believe in this kind of education. We believe in you know um, the ag agitational function of this medium. Um, so, what do you think could be for us as left podcasters or left YouTubers or whatever Twitchers um, the potential for actually making an impact? Do you do you do you have any presumptions there, or do you say nah? We're actually just entertainment, you know, with a little bit of education, but that's not going to change much. How do you feel about that? I I think I would probably veer on the idea that, like, maybe it's related to the therapy thing, but it is also just good to know 
like this, this was the impact I think of like the this kind of like podcast starting in the United States was people also realizing that they weren't insane it, it is kind of a thing or like finding mm-hmm. out that other people thought the way they did mm-hmm. um that's that's a big part of it I think um there is like nick kind of just said like this the left space in berlin is actually quite small when you start thinking about it you will see the same handful of people over and over again if you get really involved yeah and this is the biggest <clears throat> in this country <laughs> so like it, it can be lonely for people out there who can look at like something happening in the news and go that's terrible or that shouldn't be happening or yeah so i think just helping people not feel a little bit lonely uh, uh with their thoughts and not make them uh, not feel crazy um i think that was important during certain moments i think i think for the majority of things that we talk about in the podcast people would be like a lot of people around them would pay lip service but like the one that really really hurt me was like israel palestine and germany's reaction to it that was just like something terrible was happening and a lot of people around you were just flat out denying that it wasn't happening or yeah, or yeah. Even, worse. No, no, even even counting on yeah. it and yeah, yeah. 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 Firing yeah. It on. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. so that's like that i think is important for any kind of like left media i'm not going to say that it should do anything more than that because i don't want to set us up for failure but um uh, a little bit of a community is always nice yeah uh, uh we've we've started doing live shows and we were kind of like surprised by the amount of people who came out and who've been listening to us mm-hmm. for a while live shows on site or you mean live shows over twitch or something uh live shows on site oh, like in a bar. Yeah. Yeah. oh nice cool uh, um yeah you, know, you know everyone was being checked and stuff oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. um but yeah that we've we've been doing that we were surprised by the amount of people who actually came out uh um uh, also, the people who came out who didn't know what our podcast was, they're the real heroes, <laughs> like, being like, dragged. Oh, shit, what is this? <laughs> yeah, when your, your, your boyfriend or girlfriend drags you, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> go along for the ride. Um, yeah, and I, I, that's something, and it allows people to talk and, again, just not feel insane. Because it, it's the same kind of thing of just, like, uh, every other piece of media, possibly every other group, will also make it super serious. And I understand that for the purposes of organizing and stuff like that. You You go to a meeting... You, you, you stick to the schedule you try mm. to get shit done there isn't really room for jokes or levity because you're trying to affect change maybe there will be afterwards with drinks or something but like yeah we, we have to provide a little bit of levity so that people don't people don't burn out i think that's that's, that's basically it yeah I, actually something i enjoy about our podcast is how, like how many people also like reach out to us and say hey have you seen this like what is going on in my country right now or yeah. something like that mm-hmm. so I, I kind of feel like it brings as you said, like this community kind of thing, feeling, and yeah. also like brings together various leftists from different European or uh, US, I mean, yeah, Forever, uh, countries. Yeah. I mean, there is like, can... you also you make. You have smart. a Discord, for example, where we like, where, where everyone is like talking about certain topics from, from Norway to. Italy, Italy, yeah, Greece, <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to do like, <laughs> <laughs> like from there to there, there to there. I don't know. Yeah, and from Turkey to the Faroe like Islands. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Catholicism's a big, <laughs> it's a big part of this podcast. <laughs> no, but I, I have the feeling like because it's it's not like we're we're there like oh we're the experts or shit like that, and you just like gotta listen to us or something. I feel more like we we gain a lot of like. And knowledge from from the people that are listening to yeah. our show and it's just like it's it's yeah interesting like, just to have a nice like assortment for people yeah, yeah. You, i yeah. i i think something i didn't mention in the beginning when i was introducing myself everyone mentioned their degrees and stuff i did graphic design in college i did nothing related to politics society history economics i like I feel like my point of the podcast is just to encourage people of just like, <laughs> you are a human being living in the world. You can like talk and recognize bullshit happening. You're so. making beautiful posters. And I beautiful make beautiful posters. <laughs> for our shows. I, like, I, I really yep. enjoy that you're doing graphic design. <laughs> I think Kieran's point is actually kind of like the perfect like thing just that I would want to leave a, like on our show about is that like, our show is like a space for you to feel that it's like okay that you're like not an expert or that you're not like 
I don't know. Like, the one part is obviously, like, you know, yeah, get involved, do this, this, and that. But if you just want to listen to our show because you have people that then that you like to, like, that you kind of, like, agree with politically about, and that's it, like, that's perfectly fine. Like, if you just want to simply have us as, like, your weekly or, like, uh, like, I guess bi-weekly, if you listen to the Patreon bonus stuff, mm-hmm. like, people that you just listen to to just, like, vibe with, then that's fine for me. Like, that's, like... I I think that Kieran's perspective of that's kind of just perfect to the thing of like that, especially in this country, like having other voices that you just don't think that you're crazy is I think enough. Like I, there's no like greater plan, you know, uh, uh, if people like the show, they like it. And I like, I'm not going to ask anyone to go and do something that they like don't want to do. Like, I'm not here to be like the, the patron saint of leftism, mm-hmm. although I am, but you know, <laughs> that's different. <laughs> I also like, the, of course, that it's hopefully informative what we're oh, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that can be like, I, like that can be the thing for the show for you, and that's it. Like you can just be like, I enjoy it and I learn stuff. And that's cool. That's that's yeah, fine with me. Yeah, like you can yeah, hate us. Didn't know what was going on, for example. Like, whew, yeah. that's wild. Well, I I don't I don't know if it was a satisfying answer for you though, Nadim, because you know we're having a good time. But I don't I think I can I can give my little like nerd ass explanation, but I don't want to cut off. Go go go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I like nerd. So I know the like third, nerd explanation. The third, the third name that I would actually be inspired by is Guy Debord, the, the, the French <laughs> uh, writer, because he, um, you know, it's kind of like a, a popular meme name. Talk about spectacle and stuff, but he, I think he actually nailed um, the exact like. I, I understand people like Mark Fisher for their reasons, like Vata Benjamin's similar, but like whew, he actually captured the like internet culture of the radical left because he was dealing with like a, an emergent form in the 1960s and the idea of a spectacle isn't necessarily that like all this is bad and you should just like aussteigen because there's no where to to go mm-hmm. like it's it's everything mm-hmm. right so it's not like oh it's just this toxic culture and you're gonna leave you're gonna log off and do something different because the the internet is just like a you know, bleeding edge of a of a greater process of alienation, you know, causing us to fight or whatever. And I think the reason he's so insightful about like internet leftism specifically is because he and the, his group came out of like the art scene. And they, they, I don't know if they were political, but they were like radical artists. They're like, we want to do all the crazy stuff. We love the surrealists. And eventually they realized, oh, but if you really want to be radical, you have to be a communist. There's, there's nothing, the art has just limitations in terms of what it can do. And the internet culture is the same way i mean you should enjoy it for what it is but that feeling of like radicalism that feeling of you're building something and you're going somewhere you're not wrong it's useful like other people are seeing and feeling what you're feeling but you have to do the like um what is it hydrolysis you have to separate the like chill hanging with your friends and the political aspect of it and you can start fostering that political aspect of it but you are doing a piece of culture you're doing art you're doing a a a scene and that like the only way to actually be radical in that is to abolish it eventually Mm -hmm. and that's what i think um people should know yeah well that's uh, that sounds like the perfect cue for me to end the stream and to to, or to <laughs> abolish the stream, let's say. No, no pressure. <laughs> I do have to pee, but you know, this, <laughs> that may influence my... Uh... Uh, guys, I, I have a couple of other questions here. We didn't talk about your recurring characters, um, Bera, the Skull, Vault, Cloth, etc. <laughs> Um, we should definitely do that. We we should also talk a little bit. We talk some, we should talk some shit about the Underdeutschen because we do we do that a lot at non yeah. Yeah. Um So that's also I mean not only shit to be honest. We also just investigate them seriously. Um, so that that's that could be interesting. And I think a thousand other topics. So please come back. Maybe next time when all of you are healthy and when we all we when we are all good. We meet. Uh, oh no, I'm gonna meet get right COVID here. And just, just for just to just. Nick's just, gonna get more COVID. You, you don't want to. Yeah, Nick's because gonna you, outdo Bolsonaro. You don't. You don't, you don't yeah. want to come to uh, Charlottenburg. That's why. I, I would love <laughs> to. I love the purple background. <laughs> actually, uh, the, the background ends right there. So that's it. That's oh. the, we all that's... have to squeeze <laughs> it. <laughs> 
that's a, that's a thing that we have to figure out when all four of, four of you are coming, but we'll find a way for sure. I could have been a massive asshole and just like tilted it a little bit. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay. I don't have anything to show off. Uh, guys, any, I don't see any other questions or comments in the... Uh, yeah, there's someone asking you for your opinion on the tempo limit. That's a running running gag. <laughs> um, and, yeah, thank you, Casual Antifa. I have to, I have to consult my uh, my my best friend on Twitter, Oath Posha, to give you my opinion. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's a that's a fun character bit that we can tease because just um, the story of Nick and Oath Posha becoming best friends on Twitter. <laughs> Weird. It's yeah, nice. That he wished, he wished me a good the other day, so I don't see any of you guys in the chat. Say that. Well, uh, that'll that'll be a teaser for the more irreverent episode we come back to do. <laughs> All right. Is there anything that you would like to um, tease out or announce or something that you want to say in the end before we before we log off? Uh, follow us all on Twitter. I bully listen Volt. to our podcast. I, I, uh, follow, <laughs> listen to the podcast. Yeah, I bully Volt on Twitter. Um. Ooh, for an opinion on crime thing. Ah, yes, I was also radicalized before the financial crisis. Um, <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, if you don't know where to start with our podcast, uh, we have a website for that, operationglad.io forward slash start. And there we have our episodes kind of like sorted by topic and country that we've covered. Right. Um, we'll link that in the, in the description of this uh, podcast, both perfect. in audio and in video. And uh, you got an audio for this. If you want to post it, um, you can do that. We too. would like to do that. Yes, thank you. Um, all right, please don't run away immediately. I'll close the stream, but we can have a short um, uh, Nachbesprechung. Oh, wait. One, <laughs> Nachbesprechung. One, one, Very one, German uh, of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> shout out, because uh, we've been asked about this a little bit. Um, we are doing, uh, I guess Kieran and I are starting this back up again this next week of like the the gladios. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Behind the, be, yeah. So. Behind the, yeah. <laughs> Behind the paywall, we've been doing a series, a deep dive into Operation Gladio across all of Europe. We started with an overview. We will be doing our first focus episode on the Greece Gladios operation, as right. well as the like civil war, because that's kind of connected and kind of not. And um, when we release the Greece episode soon, we will uh, uh, put the first episode out for free. So if you don't want to pay, that's fine. But you know, you should pay. I have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> a Ger- we'll get to Germany eventually. Go, go oh, to I'm Patreon. Really, I'm reading about the German Gladio operation. It's fucked. It happened here too. Oh, yeah. The best thing, a little teaser. The, the I I I looked at it the other day just to laugh about it. Yep. There's an inquiry to the who would it be? The Interior Minister? I forget who it was. Um, asking about Gladio. And they said, no, it doesn't exist. And then a year later, they're just like, yeah, okay, it exists. That same person in charge. <laughs> oh, we anything. kind of lied there. What, <laughs> what changed? What changed? No, literally, it's like a whole thing. And they just wrote nine. And they're like, the other, your other questions don't apply because. Nine, nine. <laughs> and then what changed? That was published three days before the first reunified German elections in 1990. And we couldn't be admitting anything about nato cold war we couldn't scare over the east germans we were tell- we were telling them the water is great we can't be like actually yeah. there's, there's secret armies murdering people we're giving bombs to like all sorts yeah. of random nazis uh but you know now you're stuck with us so here's, here's all bullshit look we're reunified no one asks any questions about technician <laughs> all fine <laughs> It's in the Fine, Bundestag yes, records. No, it is. It is Bundestag.de slash blah 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 dot pdf. They're on there. Okay. Now, now I gotta become a. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, again, thanks for being here. Uh, I will see you in a second in the Nachbesprechung. And uh, thanks for everyone in the chat, everyone listening to this. Have a nice evening or a nice start in the week, and see you soon. <laughs>